Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Sherry and today is Slow Cooker Sunday, but it is also National Cuban Sandwich Day. So we're going to be slow cooking a pork shoulder or a pork butt so we can make an awesome Cuban sandwich. But before I get started, if this is your first time here, you love food, fun, and slow cooker recipes, go ahead, hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell and be sure to check the description below so you can find details on how subscribing helps to feed the hungry. All right, so if y'all have been watching for a while, you know on Sundays I do my slow cooker recipes and I usually have my Pampered Chef Rock Crock, you know, that turns into a slow cooker as well. And that's what I normally use. But today we have a 10 pound pork shoulder here or a pork butt and it just will not fit in there. So I had to get out the big guns. I've got my roasting oven here that my daughter got me and I just love it. And I'll tell you why I like a roasting oven. So you can cook, you can slow cook in an oven, you can slow cook in here, you can slow cook in a slow cooker. You can actually take my quick cooker, which is a pressure cooker, and you can slow cook in that. It just means that you're turning the temperature down really low, so it takes a lot longer to cook, and, and therefore it's called slow cooking. So, and this we're actually gonna cook for about 24 hours, so we are doing this real slow and low. And so with a regular crock pot or slow cooker, a low setting is at about 200 degrees and a high setting is at about 300 degrees. And if you're lucky and you have one like mine, it might even have a warm setting on it. But that's about it. You really can't dial in the temperature like you can with a roasting oven. So this is why I like to use this also. We're going to put this at about 225 degrees and we're going to cook this, like I said, for about 24 hours. I went ahead and took my pork roast and I cut the skin, the fat, whatever off of here. And I would be glad to show you how I did that if I thought it would be of any help to anyone. <laughs> so like I always say, I am not a real chef. I just play one on YouTube. <laughs> so a lot of times in the past, I would just hand this off to my husband and say, try to get all the fat off of here that you could. Now I just, I do it myself. I just get a really sharp knife and I just get in there and get as much off as I possibly can. Most of the time, let me say, if I was going to put this in a, like in a smoker outside and I was just going to do this maybe for about eight or 10 hours, I might've left all this on there and I would actually turn my pork shoulder so that the fat is on top so that those drippings from the fat, you know, drip down and it actually keeps the meat very moist. But because we're going to do this in the slow cooker, I know it's going to turn out really moist. I don't have to worry about that. My son does not like to eat fat. He doesn't like to see it in his meat, nor do I sometimes. So I went ahead and trimmed that off. The other thing I did was I let this come up to room temperature. So because it is so large, I had it out for probably about two and a half hours now. So next thing I want to do is make a rub for this. And I'm going to start with one full cup of brown sugar. So you can use a light brown sugar. You can use a dark brown sugar. And then I'm going to add in one tablespoon each of, I've got some minced onion here. I've got some garlic powder. I've got some chili powder. And I've got some paprika. Then I'm also going to add in one and a half teaspoons of salt. We're going to add in one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of white pepper, one teaspoon of black pepper, and a half a teaspoon of ground fennel. All right, so this is my secret recipe that I vowed I would never tell anyone what's in here. So don't tell anybody what's in here. I'm sharing this with you guys only. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up with my hands really well. And that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're just going to pack this in all over all sides. And I just really like to press it in there, make sure that I get it good. And I probably could have went ahead and put this in the slow cooker, but I wanted to make sure you guys were able to see what I was doing. Now, another thing I might do if I wasn't going to be cooking this for so long at such a low temperature, I might want to put this rub on here and let this rub sit for a while, you know? So if I was going to do this like on some pork steaks or, and you know what? I forget. Some people don't know what a pork steak is. I really do think that's a St. Louis thing, a pork steak. <laughs> it's basically just a pork butt that's been cut into steaks. So that's about all I knew growing up. I didn't know what a real steak was. All I ever knew a steak was, was a pork steak. <laughs> I don't even think we got pork steaks as kids. We got the hot dogs and the parents got the pork steaks. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... Bring my roaster over here. I got quite the mess going on. And because this is at such a low temperature, I'm not really going to worry about, you know, propping this up, putting it on any vegetables or putting it on a rack. You know, I don't think it's going to burn or scorch. So I'm just going to put this right in the bottom. And I'm going to transfer all this goodness with it. Now, if you're going to do, you know, a pork shoulder that's only, you know, four or five pounds, you can definitely cut this recipe in half, you know, as far as our, our rub goes. So I'm just turning him over 
making sure I've got this coated really well. And of course, this rub is going to make this really sweet and a little bit spicy. And so those are the flavors that I like. If you don't like those, you can always do like a rosemary or something else. And if I'm being honest, I've never made a Cuban sandwich, so I don't really know what kind of flavor goes into their pork that they put on their sandwich. I just know I had 10 pounds of pork that I had to cook up, and it was going to be National Cuban Sandwich Day, so we were going to cook this the way that I normally cook it, that I know is good, and we're going to pull some of this off here, and we're going <laughs> to make a sandwich out of it. And then the rest of it, we might just do like some pulled pork with or something. I'm not sure. So anyway, you can go ahead and you can customize the, you know, the rub to your liking, which also reminds me, we're going to put in about a full can of some Angry Orchard. And the reason I'm putting this in here, sometimes I'll put apple juice in here. It really just depends on what I have on hand and what I like. But um, you can actually add water if you don't have anything on hand. The reason I'm using this is, I may have said this before and I may not have, but I usually try to video about two days a week. And on those two days, I try to do you know three to five videos, depending on how far ahead or how far behind I am. And so one of the videos I just did was for a Bacon Me Angry drink. And we used about four ounces of this. I had this left over, so I thought I'm going to go ahead and incorporate that into my next recipe. So I'm going to put the lid on here. I'm going to put this on about 225 degrees, and then I'm going to let this cook for about 24 hours. I'm going to keep an eye on it every so, you know, every couple of hours or so. I'm going to open it up and look, make sure it's not running out of liquid. If I need to add some water or some more beer or whatever I need to add to it, I will. And then after about 24 hours, I'll see you back here and we will be assembling a sandwich. Okay, so it's been not quite 24 hours, but our pork is done. And my husband, bless his heart, was trying to do me a favor. So I get, well, I guess he was hungry too. I'm not sure he was trying to do me a favor, but he got in here and he went ahead and <laughs> pulled it apart and took the fat out and everything. Well, and he really didn't even have to pull it apart. I mean, he had to shred it a little bit, but it pretty much falls off the bone. But I really wanted to show you guys how I use these, this tool here, which is our pork shredder, and I didn't get a chance to do that. So he pulled all the fat out. He knows that I don't really like the fat. Our son won't eat it if it has fat in it. He doesn't care for it either. So he just went through. Luckily, I caught him before he tossed out my bones and stuff because I like to save all of that, whether I'm going to make a, a stock out of it or what have you. I also looked up while this was cooking away as to what seasonings actually do go in, you know, the pork for a Cuban sandwich. And I think it's olive oil. It's orange juice, garlic, oregano, cumin, lime, those types of flavors. So if you want an authentic Cuban sandwich, that's probably what you want to use. But like I said, I knew I was only going to use a little bit of this for the sandwich, and the rest of this is going to go into some um, barbecue pulled pork sandwiches. So that's the reason that I put the seasoning on here that I did. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and pull some of this pork out so that we can make our sandwiches. And I'm going to put the rest of this in the fridge for my pulled pork barbecue sandwiches, and we will get ready to assemble our Cuban sandwich. Okay, I think we are ready to assemble our sandwich. So it calls for Cuban bread. I didn't see anything like that at the store. I'm not quite sure what Cuban bread is. Like when I look at the sandwiches, it looks similar to like a French or Italian loaf. I just happened to grab a sourdough loaf. It was on sale, so <laughs> that's what I grabbed. It was soft enough, I thought, to make a sandwich. It's hardy enough to stand up to all the meat and stuff. So I cut it in half and then I cut it in thirds. So I'm actually going to make three sandwiches here. And then one of the things it says to do is to butter the sides of the bread and then you put it in a skillet and put a really heavy skillet on top of that and kind of grill it. So I just got out my panini maker. I figured that would be just as easy. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is add some mustard. Now you can just use a regular mustard if you like. You guys know I love hot, spicy, sweet. So this is sweet and hot mustard and I probably need a little bit more. I think that's good. All right, so we'll spread this around. So the next thing we're gonna do is add some cheese. So we got Swiss cheese here. Then we're gonna add some pickles. So several of the recipes I saw called for dill pickles. And then this particular recipe, I think it was on the Food Network, called for like the bread and butter pickles. So I would say use whatever you prefer. I prefer the sweet pickles, so that's what I'm using. So now we're gonna put some ham on here. So. I guess just however much you like. <laughs> I want to make this a pretty hearty sandwich, though. I think I'm going to maybe make the other two later. And this one I'll, I'll split with my husband when he gets home. I'm not sure. But he likes a lot of meat on his sandwiches, so. Okay, so now we're going to add our pork. Yeah, this is a manly sandwich. <laughs> our pork. That looks pretty good. And then another slice of cheese. So this is gonna be our glue that holds it all together. Okay, I'm not sure that this needs any butter on the outside, but 
what the heck. So I don't think we'll need to get out, you know, pots and pans to do this with. I think I can probably do it in my panini maker. We'll see, though. We do want to get it nice and warm and toasty on the outside. All right, good enough. I'm going to put this in here. If I can remember how to get it open, let's see. There we go. I don't know, guys. It's sliding around. <laughs> we're gonna be able to do it this way or not i think we may have to get out the pots and pans maybe i should have got a different bread actually you know what i'm just gonna grill it <laughs> grill it on this side and then i'm gonna turn it over that's what i'm gonna do so we'll let this get nice and toasty i've just been pushing my sandwich down from time to time just to get the nice grill marks on it because i really am too lazy to dig out a pan today and the sandwich is too big for the panini maker but we made it work so see if we can slide this off of here and give this a try. I think I had to take three bites to get a bite of everything. <laughs> I think I put too much pork on it. It's so big, but it is so good. I don't know if this tastes anything like an authentic Cuban sandwich, but this one's pretty good. And I'm glad that I used the bread and butter pickles. I think it goes really, really well with it. That's a delicious sandwich. So I hope you guys give that a try. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.